your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose.
private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. Oh, by the way, I told Kate about this. Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me that she understood the thing. She's a sensible woman, and that stuff from your ex was like manipulation 101. I know. I can read into them and freak out. And say I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. So I just need to check. That's a bit excessive, I think. Considering the fact that I spotted no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing. Exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist?
Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Just wait a few days. I'm sure it'll sort itself out. You have strong feelings for Thornbridge Manor. I beg your pardon? An unusual connection to the place, even though you married into the family. I do not. I mean, it is my husband's ancestral grounds. Of course I care, but what are you insinuating? Just an observation. Looking good, man. Looking good. Oh, I, I could listen all day. What a marriage. Splendid dynamics between the two. Loaded with conflict. Unsaid fears and desires. I could just stare all day. Yes. Bad news, that I'm explains a lot. Don't have any extra fuses. this shoot to happen. Okay. You strike me as independent Perfect. and self-sufficient? Taking a break where the family Take might see. From another fuse box? I'll finish setting up and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, let me think. I'm sure I left 20 quid in my locker, but when I came in this, it was only a fiver. No, not perceptive at all.
Hello, sir. Mr. Fernsby, I'm ready to see the crime scene. Very well, Mr. Whitmer. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madam Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. This morning, a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you. So please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is... Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. 
did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. survive an entire weekend this shit hole. Perhaps a brisk walk in the... I said speed up time, not my passing. Now just go away, will you? <laughs> um, you are invading my personal space. Very well, Mr. Fernsby. Sir, make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't need... Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? It's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings so customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? Only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. 
I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to- Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Yes, hi Cassie, it's me again, Edward. I, I know I'm not supposed to leave you messages and this is the last time, I promise. It's just, uh, I don't know how to handle this whole situation. I, I don't think I can really, I, I, I can't feel my legs and my eyes are not working properly. This flicker thing again. Y you can't tell anyone. But well, the thing is, I've been asked to perform the eulogy at the funeral event tomorrow. I know it all sounds so unbelievable. But even though Mother is still alive, we still have to go through with the funeral. I have to write the eulogy. I don't think I can. She will definitely want to read it, and no matter what I... Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? 
Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. Anything else I can... Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Right. Tell me. She turned up and demanded to be put up in Madame Carlyle's bedroom. Yes, the family after all. It is only fitting. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, <laughs> like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games, never any romance. I deserve romance. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside, except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me, I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. So who you can guess will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. I can't deal with all Would this Would you mind taking a few steps away from me? Oh, no, I have to, but Amy thinks she might be... It's gonna be a death. Fine, Robbie. Kids are great. Mary for not making the bed the way she
Greetings, sir. Insistent that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler. Oh, of course. Hello, sir. Security detail at a staged funeral event tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be a first. Hold it, sir. I... On top of everything, Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. I mean, that's a breaking heart happening if I ever saw one. Life can be tough sometimes. Alexa, back from the dead. A make-believe funeral. A murder mystery. Oh. to the funeral. What's up with Madame Carlyle? I vetted him thoroughly. He's good. Yeah, keep it real. What is it, Fernsby? This thing she needs to see. She seems to be under the impression that something is afoot with the Carlisle mandates. Branch. Oh, Rebecca. Such a shame with all the idealism, though. 
I don't know who you are, and frankly, I don't give a shit. I'm letting you through here. You can't deter her, Fernsby. When she smells a good story, there is no stopping her. Did you talk to Mother? I haven't had the pleasure of She just clams up when I try to get an explanation. Not even an apology. I mean, <laughs> believing our Mother... I actually, be my... yeah, I, I should right, let you go. Later.
Hello, sir. Painkillers. Lethal if you use enough of them. I'm ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Greetings, sir. This is Madame Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Keep your distance, sir. Please, go ahead. 
the butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. Hmm. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlisle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The Constant? But that must mean you're... Oh. <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. Greetings, sir. The file you want is in the safe. The file you want is in the safe. Good hunting. I need some privacy. Thank you. Please stay back. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Hey, how are you? Hello. God, I'm so, so fucked. fucked. The last God goddamn, goddamn principle. principle. Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, come on,
Oh, God, get out! Constantine!